Good golly, Miss Molly. Yo, Cub, where's a grinder? Today we want to do seven common mistakes in MIG welding. We want to make some good beads. We want to show you seven different variables or common mistakes that you can identify and correct. So let's get to it. The first one happens to be material preparation. I want to weld on some clean material, make some decent looking beads, and I want to show you the effect of welding on dirty material or unprepped material. It can be a slight variation, depends on how much rust and mill scale. It could be a huge difference when we get into slag or heavy amounts of rust. So let's get started. Fairly smooth, decent bead. The sound uh, to me was pretty crispy and pretty solid. It's round, the bead's rounded up a bit. Doesn't have any place for it to go. I'm just listening to the machine for stability. This was on a piece of clean material, and now I want to contrast that to something that has a fair amount of rust and mill scale on it. I want to do a bead right next to that on this rusted surface just to see what's going to happen. To me, that looks like and sounded like it was colder. Rust and mill scale, as I see it under the under the weld hood here, under the lens, it's like it starves the weld pool of fluidity and keeps the edges from blending into the parent metal. If this had heavy rust on it, we'd probably notice an interruption in the arc. The sound would be different. It would spatter more, okay? So <clears throat> that's one effect of unclean material. And by the way, when I clean this one, I simply scratched it lightly with a, a flapper disc. It came off pretty nice and clean instantly. I didn't have to spend a lot of time on this. The next common mistake is the voltage adjustment. So on this first bead, we established a, a decent baseline here. Our voltage was 19.5 volts and 200 inches a minute on wire feed speed. And it's okay, we'll just establish everything off of that. So this next common mistake would be voltage too high or too low. I'm gonna leave the wire feed speed alone, go to my baseline setting of 19.5. Let's go to 25.5. We're leaving the wire feed speed alone. That bead is very wide, and as you could see as I was making the weld, <clears throat> The end of the wire was melting off in big globs. By the way, that's what that transfer method is called. Three very common uh, transfer methods with gas metal arc welding or MIG welding, short circuit, globular, and spray. This was more toward the globular. It's very hot, and the end of the wire was kind of melting off in big balls. The next one we're gonna run is voltage too low and I think we're gonna turn it down to, we were at 19.5. Let's go down to 15 volts. Again, we're gonna leave the wire feed speed alone. Wow, I think I recognize that condition. As you can tell by the arc shot, by the bead appearance, it's very cold, stacked up. We weren't actually even clearing any kind of a transfer and establishing a weld pool. To me, what it looked like under my hood is just stacking on top of each other. It's not really melting or fusing into the bead. This third common mistake that we're gonna identify is wire feed speed too high or too low. So let's run too high. Our baseline was 19.5 volts, 200 inches a minute. I'm gonna crank the wire feed speed up to 325, somewhere in that range. That's fairly close. The voltage too low. Again, there's enough to melt, but it's coming out of there so fast that it can't clear and make a transition. It just doesn't want to melt. It's just too high. That was wire feed speed too high. The next one was going to be too low. These are kind of ridiculous numbers and obvious, but that's what we're trying to drive home. Well, I think from 200, let's go down to, let's go down to as low as the machine goes. So I'll, I'll just turn it way down. That was a little strange, that's over the top. I'm gonna speed the wire up just a little bit. We went as low as we could. I'm gonna turn it up to 115 and see if I can't 
make this a little more stable and realistic. And that, folks, was a slow motion in real time of how short arc actually works. The wire comes down and bumps into the grounded material, initiates the arc, the wire burns back, the transition, the ball falls off, it just keeps doing that over and over. The sizzling sound that you hear with MIG welding is 50 to 200 times per second, okay? So you, you can kind of get a perspective of what's happening, but the relationship between voltage and wire feed speed. Wire feed speed relates to amperage on MIG welding. The next common fault we want to identify, we say fault, common mistake, is electrical stick out too high or too low. Electrical stick out is defined as how far the wire is sticking out past the contact tip, not the nozzle, to the material. Okay, so, you know, ideally for short circuit MIG welding, we want to hold about three eighths of an inch to a half inch. Okay, so this right now is about three eighths of an inch. To me, I have to get underneath the nozzle here. So I'm probably holding more of about a half inch. So I want to weld a little bit of bead correctly, and then I want to pull this way up. That is the electrical stick out way too long, obviously, but I need to mention this. I was impressed by that. That was extremely long and the machine was still trying to run. It stayed fairly stable. What happens here is I have gas coming out of this nozzle. We mentioned that before. That's what protects your weld pool from the atmosphere. As I pull this way back, I notice the weld got kind of crowned up and it looks strange. There's probably porosity or bug holes impressions, voids in this weld bead. I would have to grind the top of it off to tell you for sure. I know that there are some strange looking bumps in here where the machine actually did kind of poop out, but I'm telling you that was, that was pretty impressive. This next condition, actually it's the opposite of this, is too low or too short of electrical stick out. And here's where it becomes dangerous for me. I don't want to ruin this contact tip I'm gonna to try to cram it down in there too far. I don't wanna to touch the contact tip to the weld metal because then I'll weld the wire into the copper contact tip. So, and then I, I, obviously I'm not gonna be able to see. You'll probably see me move way over here and lay down because I'm having to look underneath the nozzle to make this weld. So it's not gonna be a drastic change like this, but it, it will make a little bit of a difference. Did it weld with too short or a, a less of a electrical stick out? Yes, it did. However, it, it's just, I can't see. I wasn't going in a straight line. Uh, it's, it's really hard to do. Plus you take the chance of actually welding the wire into the contact tip here. So that's not a, a good condition. And I see people weld like that they have a hard time following any kind of a joint configuration like a lap weld or a T weld to make a fillet or in a groove sometimes. You can't, it, you can't kind of see where you're going. I like that proper electrical stick out that we mentioned of three eighths to a half of an inch. Personally, I position myself where I can see where I'm going and the finished weld pool all at the same time. The next condition that we're gonna talk about is the gas flow itself. Obviously we can turn it way low and we're probably going to see like over here, we're going to create some porosity. We can turn it way up. We may not notice a super effect into the weld pool, but we're wasting gas and we can also create porosity that way. Gas will be coming out of this nozzle so fast that it creates what we call a Venturi effect and it draws air in behind the gas and puts it in the weld pool. It may happen. It may not, but again, you're wasting gas, so there's no need for it. We have our gas today set at 20 cubic feet per hour. 
So from here, we're gonna turn it, uh, let's just follow the same pattern. Let's just turn it way up first. Wow, gas way too high. Again, nothing really happened, but I can hear this gas just ripping out of this nozzle. It's not adding any effect or benefit to the weld pool. It didn't make it better is what I'm saying. We're just wasting gas. Let's go the opposite way and turn the gas down to uh, five cubic feet per hour. Maybe even, well, we don't want to turn it off, obviously. Let's go down to five cubic feet per hour. <clears throat> that was gas too low. It did what I kind of expected to. It has some bug holes in here on the surface of the weld bead, which is called porosity. And the rest of it really tried to run okay, but I, I could tell there was a difference in sound. We've got some nice little bug holes here to start, and it, and it looked like it was trying to create them in the bead. They didn't quite pop out to the top of the bead, but I really think they are in there because of the sound and the way it looked. So. The next variable that is uh, commonly uh, incorrect, I should say, is travel speed. We're, we're having to travel along in such a manner that we're creating a bead of the same width, same height. So if we go too fast, we can get a condition where our, bear, our bead gets real narrow, kind of peaked, and again, we could have some fusion problem getting into the parent metal. Watch this, see what happens. So I started out and I do my normal thing, which is kind of a tick-tock, very gentle tick-tock. That's how I learned to weld, that's how I move. And I, obviously right over here, just kind of sped up. Things got kind of narrow, very inconsistent, and we're, we're not directing that pool to fuse into the parent metal. This next one, we're gonna do just the opposite. We're gonna start out and weld normal, and then we're gonna to go too slow. Nothing's really gonna happen drastically other than the weld is gonna get a little wider and it's gonna build up quite a bit more, I should say more, okay? <clears throat> Two things here. I realize that's out on the edge of the plate and you're getting a drastic glow of red hot. I can reproduce it elsewhere, but you get the gist of what's happening here. I slowed way down, it got real wide, and I'm just cooking the material and the beads staying hot for a long time. Excessive amounts of weld do not produce more quality welds. It's, you know, a, a little bit is good and more is better. That's not the way that works. So correct travel speed. You want to maintain that bead appearance and width and the crown too high, we jet forward, we get real narrow, we've got problems, inconsistencies, too slow, we're just stacking more excessive weld on there that's not adding any more strength to the material. The last variable or common mistake that we wanna talk about that people do is gun angle. I have been welding most of these at a little bit of a tilt forward. You have a window of a push angle or a drag angle. From dead zero, I keep mine anywhere around 10 degrees, leading or trailing, pushing or pulling. A slight effect on what it does to the weld pool. Now we're gonna really show what happens here when we do, uh, I'm gonna, I guess since I've been doing this in a, a slight drag angle, then I'm gonna start that way. And I'm gonna really lean it over here and get stupid probably throw some nice dingleberries on my shirt. And then to opposite of that, we'll start out, do the same thing. And I'll lean it way over here in a big push angle and it's gonna spit some BBs out. Uh, we started out normal. And then I twisted this handle and kind of laid this over. By doing that, I automatically increased the wire stick out. We talked about that condition, but I tried to keep it in there fairly close and within range. And I need to tell you again, by doing that, this machine didn't, didn't do what I call crapping out. It didn't start getting weird and bucking around. It stayed in there pretty smooth. So uh, this next one, you know, I'm gonna stay at this baseline and we're just gonna change gun angle. I'm gonna start out up here around top dead zero here at 90 degrees, run a little bit of bead. And then I'm gonna lean this way forward 
Again, it creates conditions where, you, to me, it feels like I'm just automatically out of control and making any kind of a consistent bead. I don't, I don't feel comfortable doing that. It can also cause problems with shielding gas. We're not, you know, we're leaned over so far that we're not getting that nice blanket of argon CO2 shielding gas around the weld pool. So, you know, again, we wanted to say that we want to identify some of these variables, how to master them, how to overcome some problems if you identify something in machine settings. You know, first thing, let's prep our material and get it fairly clean. You don't need to spend huge amounts of time and just buff it down to mirror finish, polish or anything, but knock the scale and poop off of it, you know, help yourself out. Establish a baseline. If you hear anything or see anything that you saw in this video that you can kind of identify, then you'll know, oh, wait a minute, I need to turn my wire up or my voltage down or something. You, you kind of know where to go with this. Material prep, voltage too high, too low, wire too high, too low, uh, electrical stick out, gas flow, travel speed, gun angle. It sounds like a lot. You're, you're doing it when you pull the trigger anyway. So now you kind of know what to look for. If we can help in any way, please put it in the comments. We've appreciated your subscriptions to Weld.com over the years. Hit the notification button so you can, you can get a little dinger bell notification and, and uh, check us out of when cool content like this comes out. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram as well. Thank you.